So my dad is renowned for his stubbornness. All of his friends know it, his ex-wife know it, his kids know it, and often the response to his childish behavior and emotional immaturity is just, ah, well that's Lawrence. And it came to a head last night and it's gonna end up costing him his family. So my mom and dad have been divorced for most of my life. They're still pretty friendly to each other. They're still in each other's lives. And so my mum, who now lives with her sister-in-law and her son, so my cousin, have helped dad move certain things from his house to my house. Uh, and dad wanted to say thank you by taking my cousin out to dinner. And that's a really nice thing to do. And it's how my dad says thank you. He takes people out. Kirsty didn't want to go. She was like, we can't sit there and watch him eat Chinese food. If you haven't watched the last episodes, Chinese food's gonna kill him. It's really high in sodium. It's what he likes to eat, but um, my dad has a heart condition. That means that if he has high salt food, he uh, retains a lot of fluid. To get rid of that fluid, we have to uh, give him a lot of diuretic drugs, which will fuck his kidneys. It'll either kill him because his lungs float with fluid or his kidneys will fail quicker. Now I kind of was interested to go because I wanted to see what he does and how he acts around Chinese food when we're not there because his friends take him out a lot. He tells me he orders steamed chicken, steamed fish and has that but I suspect that he has whatever he wants. So he went there, he ordered for everyone and the first thing comes out was a little gold cup. As the Lazy Susan was spinning he says to me, now if I have certain things tonight I don't want you to say anything. And I said to him, do not put me in that position. Uh, so the gold cups came around and he went to take one. Kirsty and I said no and dad does what dad always does when he wants something and doesn't want to argue about it. He threatens to make a big sting. So my dad who's in a wheelchair who I'd driven to the restaurant says to me, do not make a scene. I will walk out of here, right? Knowing that first of all, he can't walk. And second of all, he has nowhere to go. But like everything with my dad's life, when he makes a big stink and threatens to make a scene, everyone, especially in the Asian culture, wants to save face. And so they let him have his own way. We knew what was happening. He just wanted to have what he wanted. And not only that, he wanted to be a big man in front of me and show me that I don't run his life uh, and that I'm not in charge of him. So the second dish comes out and it's like a deep fried tofu. And he goes to get a piece of that too. And I said, what's in it? And he just ignored me because he thought that ignoring the person asking him the questions would mean that I would go away. I shook his wheelchair and I said, are you eating that because it's got salt in it? Are you not answering me because you know it's got salt in it? And he didn't say anything. At that point, my mum, who was sitting on his other side, tried to smooth things over by, you know, putting her arms around and go, oi, don't, don't cause a stink. And just before I completely cracked the shits, Kirsty, she started welling up. This is my wife. So that's, begins to cry, says, I can't do this anymore. I can't be here watching you do this. We're the ones that have to look after him. He's killing himself. He's just gonna dump his shitty symptoms onto us and we're the ones who have to deal with it. In the end, I said to dad, if you eat any more of this, we're gonna go. He defiantly puts another bit in his mouth. So in front of all of his ex-family and a restaurant that he fucking loves, we got up, we said goodbye to people and we walked out. And that's a fairly big thing. No one stands up to my dad. The only times it's happened was when his wife left him. Kirsty and I ended up having a lovely dinner uh, in the city. We walked up and down a street together, something we don't get to do very often. The only thing that was wrong with it was that we were talking the whole time about dad and what this now means in terms of us caring for him. And so we got home, eventually mum had brought him home. She wanted to come in and see how things were. We talked for a long time. Eventually she went out to get him. Kirsty and I went upstairs. I really, I feel terrible about this, but Mum said, are you going to help me get him out of the car? And I said, no, he's not going to get any help from us if he isn't going to accept all of it. They had a chat in his bedroom uh, for about two hours. The reason I know that is because I came down to do this last night and mum was still in the house. I could see the car and I heard voices coming from his room. So I did something that I can only imagine kids in movies do. Uh, or kids with parents when they're arguing. My parents have been divorced since I was three, so I never really got to do this, but I sat at the top of the stairs, uh, I lay down on my stomach, and I listened to their conversation. And my mum, bless her, was just going to town on him, in a lovely way, like it was all, um, you know, hushed tones and stuff. And every time my dad said something, she would say, I understand, but, and then explain the reality of the situation. 
Uh, she was really good. That went on for two hours. I talked to her this morning. Uh, she kind of explained a little bit about what went on. So we then had to go and face dad. Now we'd made some rules about what his behavior means. And if he wants to stay in our care, what he has to now do. But I know this video is super long. So I'm gonna tell you what our rules were and what happened in the next video.